Yama was Kava so Kala Evesina Sol. Some Kuteran of Kuniga Kulu are my pitches. Sistola Sila and I'm flat. I'm a business size combis. Axon and Lessis Cabesuxon and I'm flat. Ukumbu Logutsi Bonagabasa Kutelan for an agam comel on cool. We investment. God to Agate, sitting on my business, a man. In today's episode, our judges will have their work cut out for themselves as they deliberate, review previous pitches. Let's take a footy back to Anning, you go to your business in Gamunya Gamun. Yenage, when's the Ganjani Ama tasks work? Ukumbu, you go to your till Shonagan and Amplange, must perilous escape. Since we've seen Ama business, a man, I kept on my church's weight. Bonagabas will put the land of Honor Comelo on cool or a fifty thousand rand. This is making moves. Welcome. I guess move a business. I Ambesha Africa, Utsilo Wellness and Fitness Club, Little Harvard Kids Academy, Wambangi Manufacturing, Binda 2 Tissue, Pesegbe Konagile Zins Izwage Zonagez Renovator, Zipinde Zinagegela Mapilid, Mkabel Real Estate. Ushkapse Tsana Mshanji, Sikpatela Machachis Amash, Amatato, Wongondong Ndogweza Mapiznis. Futi ke bona ke bazo siza ukuze sikwazi ukucwaninga wonke la business nawo kusona lesi sigaba ukuze ke sikhethe amane kulawo ma business azoya kwela manqa Chidi Makaya CEO of Makaya Advisory a research advisory firm The firm acts as a consultant on competition regulation and economic policy Nicholas Regisford Chief Executive of YSC Consulting and a non executive director of a retail business in Soweto. Abigail Matangu Kulusi, founder of Tushia Advisory Services, providing design and implementation of SME and entrepreneurial development programs. I am Tanti Sibeng, owner and founder of Ref Productions. This is the company within the hospitality industry. We provide catering services to corporate clients, government departments, and this is for their training sessions, meetings, workshops, seminars, as well as their day-to-day -day food deliveries. What makes us unique is that we focus on the client's specific needs. So we are client-oriented and we strive to meet the expectations and exceed them while remain, remaining competitive. You can find us at www.repproductions.co.za. I liked the ladies, uh, the business owners spirit. Mm. My only concern is that it seems like a very generic business. Mm. You know, she showed good spirit, but she did not bring that out at all. The fact that that's what makes her different to all the other catering companies. Mm. She's focusing on well-balanced meals, healthy eating, mm. you know. You can show your passion with food. Absolutely. There's Certainly, so much you I can do. So. Yeah. Okay. so much you can do with mm. just your environment, the way you present your stuff, the way you the way you make love to the food, to the environment how you present it it's it's all it's there's there's lots of possibility in that this is the type of food that we offer you are able to see the platters and the buffet setup that we do and this is the breakdown of the figures for 50,000 rand 8580 will be spent on the uh, marketing and the brochures printing 37,000 uh, 920 will be spent on the equipment and the packaging of the food and um, 3,500 rand will be spent on the uh, point of sale system. Um, you know, you know, there's a thousand and one catering companies out there and, um, you know, healthy living, great, fantastic. According to what she's done and what she's delivered today, the pitch was very weak nervous and stumbling over your words and all that. So it was hard to articulate that she was really oh. passionate. First task, HR, employee wellness. Go get some information, figure out how you're going to deal with that. Yeah. Second task, I'd like to see a plan per company. Okay. Because each company is different, different yes. in terms of how you're going to target their clients. Uh, the last task, third, is your company profile sucks. 
Yeah, I'll redo your website and your company profile. Okay. Just make it prettier. All right. Yeah. The purpose of this meeting today is basically to just discuss, um, to find out your employee wellness program. Mm -hmm. um, do you have one? What, do you, what does it entail? Where you start? We do have a wellness program for our employees, um, but basically it's not something that happens on a daily basis. It's actually, we started actually with making employees aware of the World AIDS Day, World AIDS Day like in December. Do you serve food in those commemoration events? In most cases, we'll just do a light snack. This is your area, so I want to find out from you, what is your current wellness plan mm -hmm. for the employees? Okay, so we don't have a specific wellness program like you would find in big corporates, but what we try and do is, like, for example, this is we start having like a wellness day. I don't know how it will work with you delivering food every day with people sometimes being here, not being here. Okay, so would you want a weekly, daily, bi daily, bi weekly delivery? I would say we can initially start with weekly. I like the way she approached her tasks. Yeah. Um, you know, very open, willing to get feedback. But I'm not sure she understood the task correctly because I think the wellness day um, angle was to basically go there and educate people around um, the benefits of eating healthy and then obviously getting them to buy her ready-made foods. I must say with the task also I was a bit confused. I was not sure if she understood the task and what was she doing, was she trying to just get more information about what they do on Wellness Day. Was she positioning the company as a service provider on Wellness Day? Yes. I, I couldn't, I couldn't yes. figure that out. I didn't see a new profile after Pepsi said that it sucked. Um, <laughs> I'm not impressed. Yeah. Where are um, the other two tasks? Because that yeah. was probably one of the three, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to our, our next uh, entrepreneur, and it's Ambesha Africa. My name is Trudy Mgansi. I'm the founder of Ambesha Africa. The company was founded in 2015. We are based at Omonde Shopping Centre. We manufacture tailored furniture, mostly made out of cane. Our furniture are customised according to our clients' needs. You can find us on our Facebook page, Ambesha Africa, or you can find us on our website, www.ambesha.co.za. When you see that furniture, there's nothing unique about no, it. That's true. But the person is unique because yeah. she can stand out from the rest in yeah. terms of how she brings herself to it. Yeah, and she's got a diverse offering. Yeah. The 50,000 uh, investment will assist our business in buying equipment that needs immediate attention. Equipment such as a bigger uh, compressor. Right now, the compressor that we're using uh, doesn't have enough capacity to accommodate uh, multiple activities. And we're also looking at uh, buying a, a table saw. The price for it is around 22,000 rand. This will help us to cut our, our wood uh, more faster compared to what's happening right now because we're using, it, uh, we're using manual cuts. We're also looking at increasing uh, the number of uh, uh, staple guns that we have because this is something that we use on a daily basis and we need a facility to soak uh, that material in. That facility will cost us around 5,000 rand and uh, we'll continue to, uh, to market our product on social media such as OLX and uh, Facebook. We're looking at spending around 8,000 8, for that. Yeah, thank you. Trudy, I'd like you to go and speak to people in your industry that you can refer business to when, either when you're too busy or when you do, and you don't have capacity. Hi, I'm here at Itemba at Max. Uh, we are here to see if we can have like a formal partnership at the next. Let's go in. How are you? Okay, so are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, Ravi is one of the guys that we've been coming here to outsource some of the stuff. Uh, for instance, they have equipment. Uh, we don't have uh, some of the equipment. So now I've explained to him that in terms of uh, bulk orders, we'll be needing more of his services. 
going forward. Like one thing I like is that uh, his turnaround time, his clientele base, the quality of his furniture, it's very good. I'm very comfortable with his work. So I'm looking forward to, to a great relationship with you. And yeah, thank no, you so much. Not a problem. Okay. Um, and uh, rough cuts to meet Alpha, the owner of the business. They do quite a lot of things and uh, it's actually two in one. So we can be outsourcing our business here and we can also get business here from their clients that might need something that we do. I guess the challenge is that with these kinds of clients, she really has to produce fast and at yes. serious scale. Well, what I did like was the collaboration opportunities yeah. that she went to see. Exactly. It was such a broad base. It was just not in, in weaving um, cane. It was in other fun. And I liked what she said. You know what? I might be able to supply their clients yeah. as well. What I think you should do is you need to go and see five businesses. Okay. The types of businesses I'm talking about are like hotels, motels. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about interior designers and decorators. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people that have their own clients, maybe a small retailer. Because I know shop fitters, mm -hmm. those types of people. Hello, I'm here today at um, Alpha Design Studio. Uh, to meet one of the clients, our potential clients, so let's go inside. Say a couch like this, four meters by two meters, how long would it take you to manufacture it? Just one couch? Yeah, just as a, a benchmark. For one couch it can take us a week. Okay. Yeah. I just finished my meeting with Jason. He liked our stuff. He's looking at um, buying uh, corner sets, single chairs, and he requested that we send him a quotation. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, how are you? My name is Trudy. I'm from Amnesia, Africa. I've just finished my interview. Unfortunately, they do everything uh, internally. They're not looking at buying outside, so we have to uh, go and get other doors. What I saw there is that she's prepared to have doors closed in her face and keep working. What I also appreciate is the fact that she's got the um, personality and character to build a business. Yeah, I was really impressed that she aimed high. Like some of the brands she went for, well-known brands, because yeah. she didn't like go to, yeah. you know, start small. And so she was rejected by some, but you know, I think it shows a level of ambition. Absolutely. Um, that is wonderful. Based on how she's performed on, on her task, yes. What should she be focusing on? Should she actually be behind the bench and manufacturing? Yeah. Or should she be actually driving the brand and getting the other guys who actually yeah. have the basic equipment to supply her and get her yeah. brand out? Okay, team, I think it's time for us to move on to the next entrepreneur. And all the way from uh, Bud Plus in Pumalanga, we will look at Binder to Tissue. I'm the co-owner of Ibinda 2 Tissue. We manufacture and supply our toilet papers. We are based here in Bad Plus in Pumalanga. We have three different commodity papers that we are producing. We have a one ply, a double ply, and a recycled paper. Our paper is um, manufactured locally. It's of high quality, and the standard of it, it's, it's brilliant. Feel free to find us on Facebook. Um, our contact details, they are there. All our emails, they are there. We will respond to you right then and there. Okay, Binda to Tissue. I'm impressed. It is not an easy industry to be in. What I'm keen to know about a bit more is are they actually making money? I'm just feeling it's a lot like the catering industry. Yeah. Look, it's been, it's, it's been saturated for various reasons and I think there's been a number of initiatives where government has pushed it, but um, none of them have survived. So for one to have survived, I will look at it to say, why have you survived? But I don't know how sustainable. I mean, from her bank statements, there's a lot of money mm. that goes in. So mm. she's good at sales, yeah. but a lot also goes out no. in terms of her costs. As you yeah. were saying, the margins are very yeah. thin. It's toilet paper, everyone needs it. Never gonna run out of customers. Ambitious business. I think she's doing well. She gets money in the bank. I think she's got the, ten the, the requirements 
from being an entrepreneur to hustle and to make this thing happen. I'm pitching today for the 50,000. Why do I want the 50,000? Given the opportunity to utilize this 50,000, this will serve as an investment to my business. The plan is to invest this money in purchasing two containers. These containers are 12 foot containers. These containers will basically contain inside two 12 jumbos. In essence, two of them will have 24. My current office space can occupy 12 jumbos. In essence, in total, with the containers, plus my office space, I'll be having three months worth of stock. I think uh, it's a good idea for her to increase space so that she can have more room to store the raw materials. However, I would only be comfortable with her doing that if she can manage or negotiate the payment terms for that stock. Because for a business this small, to have all that money trapped in stock for yes. three months is quite a long time. Yes. yes. The things that we suggest you look at in your business moving forward, right, is your market research, you know, just to find out why are people picking your product over another. Mm. It would also look at who your competitors are, because I feel like you're not entirely clear about who your competitors are. And then the second thing is that if, let's say, somebody does invest in your business at some point, you could maybe use the savings that you're going to make from uh, um, the, the investment in terms of the the, the, the drop in your transport costs and an extra five days of pension sales uh, to hire a sales uh, manager or salesperson. And then the last thing would be for you and the salesperson to go and drive sales. Today's um, objectives, one of the things that I need to do is, of course, I need to get a school that is like securing me, supplying them. I'm at Omele Combine right now. Okay, so what do you think of the product you have today? Wow, it's very good. Very, very good. One ply and it's for the So, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Sister Carolina. I want to supply with my toilet paper. Because when I walked in, I noticed the kid had a pack of toilet papers, and that's the ones that I'm actually. Supplying is fast. So see, yes, I want to test that I quality capone. So see, I touch on ten pieces. Ah, this year's a problem. We are supplying. Okay. I'm with the keep with Amelo, and um, he has actually asked us. Well, he kind of gave us, you know, that privilege of supplying our toilet paper. So we're going to be trying them, and I hope the people are going to respond very well. Okay, cool. So does this mean I'm going to bring the stock as consignment stock? and um, after a week, you give me feedback. I don't think it's an issue. If you're putting consignment stock into cash and carries, everybody will open their door for you because it's no capital, exactly. it's no yeah. capital outlay for them. And their stores are stock. And many times I think it happens that entrepreneurs feel that uh, they don't sell the value proposition and make people buy into the value proposition. It's almost like people are doing them a favor by buying their products and services and it shouldn't be that yeah. way. You know, the value proposition should sell itself and just be, be strong on its own. Mm. Um, it's a Saturday morning. I'm off to Carolina with one of my ladies to do our promotion. Uh, okay. 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 Um, my day went so well. It went well than what I expected. I think it, it got me a perspective to actually sort of view myself as a customer. And I think that helped me a lot. It gave me a lot of insight. What I think is important to realize here is that she could become a better salesperson. She's chosen an industry that may be cluttered and may be swamped and so on, but you will never run out of that need. So she's pretty much in line for a break, as far as I'm concerned. And what she needs is around her is some good guidance, good leadership. And I believe at the end of the day, when the person is willing to grind on a Saturday, come rain, su sunshine or whatever, take her people, go, which is what we saw, yes. that grit is going to make her stand up above other people. Yeah.
Okay, so let's look at our next entrepreneur, all the way from Tabanchu, Bozzello Wellness and Fitness Club. I am Dumelo Rachabe Polani, a founder of Botello Wellness and Fitness Club. It is a health and wellness center offering various services on beauty, your day spa, nail bar, as well as the gymnasium. The uniqueness of our services and products is the fact that we use organic products mainly for dark-skinned people. Pozzello Wellness and Fitness, that's doing everything else but wellness and fitness. No, I think they take care of you from top to bottom. You can gym, you can do your nails, uh, I think um, you could do a facial, massage, you can exercise. I thought that was an interesting concept to put it all in one because I go to a different nail person, I, you know. Exactly. To just have it all compressed, you Love can have it. like a good three hour session and everything's taken care of. So I like that. Yeah. Wow. It's wonderful to offer all of the services, guys, but it's not practical. I go to a place where I get three different services, manicure, pedicure, and massage from the therapists who do it all. Okay. So that concept of only one nail technician, one hair, it's not fixed. I would like to look at that business and say, she's building a complex, okay? So that when I drive in once, I get everything done. With the 50,000 rand, we're going to start up and open a world-classy, a world classy, a professional hair salon, which can cost about 30,000, and the 20,000 of the money will be taken to marketing. Here are three suggestions. Go buy a CRM system, okay. right, and start using it. Mm. On my tasks, they're making moves. I was told to get a CMR system. So I gave a phone, it's about Chwano, Hanajale. Get a system in your I should try this 14 days. Um, free solution. Yeah, CMR system that is going to help me with my books, uh, with the database of my clients and everything. So I'm going to start using it from tomorrow for my clients. Go and find out from the competition that you won. Go make your case, mm. put a proposal together, mm. write a proposal to them, put in pictures, give them a business plan that's updated and say, please allow me to mm. sell that stuff so I can reinvest in the business. Mm. Her task that wasn't completed disturbed me and then took me back to a point of saying, oh boy, because we need discipline. Yeah. Discipline is one of the things that I think is important to build any business, any relationship, any career. You have to be disciplined. Keep going, keep doing it. So it makes it hard for me to be objective now um, because of that. And then the third thing is research. Mm -hmm. Go and talk to 50 women. Okay. 50. In the Tabanchu area, mm -hmm. yes, 50. Okay. Chat to them about what they want. Hi, we are going to Saloon Tabanchu. We are going to talk about the way we are going to Saloon Ejan. We are going to talk about the services that we are going to talk about. Okay, we are going to talk about the Saloon Ejan. We are friendly. We are going to smile and we are going to talk about it. It has to be clean. Uh, salon is a comfortable place because, like, sometimes I like you, I get I'm going to do so wellness unfortunately is still reserved for the top end of the market. So the question then is in a rural area in Tabanchu, what does that top market want? You see the problem is is, is, is really it's clear. 
It's a good, no matter how good the vision is, if there's no clientele for it. So there are a number of businesses that have to shut down, unfortunately, because they're based on my beautiful vision. They're not based on who's willing to pay for the service. And I'm also not convinced that you went to see the 50 women that would actually make use of no. the... The way she did it is questionable. Like, it seemed like she literally went herself. To a friend. To, to, and to people coming through her doors, rather than maybe hiring a young intern, yes, getting and them just to going go look for strangers. And so go and do concerning. proper market research. <laughs> next one. <laughs> okay, so our next entrepreneur is Bundu Hyde. Um, let's see what he's got to offer. My name is Simpio Donald Bangi, founder and designer at Kwambangi Manufacturing. Our company brand is called Bundu High Genuine Skumba, where we specialize in the manufacturing of leather luxury merchandise. What makes our product unique is that customers can have a customized item which is different to the next order. Bundu Hyde. Well, I did like the bags. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's got a solid business. You think it's a solid business? I think he's still looking. He's still exploring. Okay. Both on the supplier side and on the customers. As I say, they're just so diverse that it's good to gather all that information, but I think he'd need to decide. Mm. Um, how we'd use the 50K is basically his focus on machinery and assets. So currently we're just using one machine, of which if we employ two more individuals, we don't want to hog up the production process. So we need two extra machinery as well for the guys to use. We want to have a pro mega marking system, basically for personaliza personalization oh, and imposing. All, right. all right, sir. So he wants the money for investment into his workshop and back-end investment, which is quite refreshing because it's not about marketing. Yeah. I figure if you had to do like a quick turnaround plan, what you could do and hustle without money, go to your suppliers, cry, decide which products are fast movers that you can move quickly. Okay. Once you've put those two together, go and see those suppliers. Then find someone who is good, mm. knows how to use the equipment, mm. that is sitting at home without a job. And then you pound the pavement. I'm talking about like a 30-day turnaround plan. Mm. And see how much cash you can generate. Today, uh, I'm in a meeting or a briefing session at the Boxshop. Boxshop is a concept store which houses a number of South African brands. Uh, it's based in Bilagazi. So, trying to get the product here to the Pine Apagati. Sankuma Konalai Boxshop. So, the final verdict is basically uh, will not be supplying immediately. But what they want to do is sort of like put me on a six month supply program where they'll look into any product that we can uh, sort of develop for Boana. So I'm here with one of the suppliers, the genuine leather people. So what we've just spoken about is a Uti, who actually will give me leeway. Um, his pricing is good, it's gonna give me leeway. I have a bunch of orders, a couple of orders. So I can pay half right now and half as soon as those customers pay. Okay, I've just sent an email to a marketplace <coughs> at zando.co.za just to find out more on how one can can showcase products on Zendo as a seller. Yeah, one. Tricky one. Um, passionate, and he seems like he's an engineer. And uh, he's not the guy to go out and talk to people. Mm. So he needs to run a workshop. He's a creative or maybe stick in that and get a partner who can do business. I don't trust him. I don't think that he can grow because he's caught between creativity and business and there's too much to learn on the business side. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't know enough about the enterprise development yeah. staff, all yeah. of those things. Yeah. Things. So True. he doesn't have enough knowledge True. around that. This is a laptop sleeve that we just did with Kevin since this morning. So he was here, we were cutting it up, they were doing the pattern, showing him how to do this, how to do that. He wants to learn basically, he's a graphic designer by trade. He wants to do bags, which is quite interesting. Yeah. And then he's pretty also supposed to from a Kextin media and it's which could see who is supposed to which analyst in him for the lady learn and I'm telling him seven seven zero. They have one so let me put this here while Usha they tell you up. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just uh, did a preliminary deal with Uput Osman. 
Let me show you the belts that she's interested in, but in various colors. So it's a skinny. So these ones over here. So he's looking for about uh, 40 to 45 units in various colors. So we'll confirm the deal on Saturday, which I'm quite happy about. Bundu hide. Well, I did like the bags. He went all the way from the high-end store to the rooftop market. So I think he's kind of willing to consider his options. So I, I generally like the vibe around the business. I think he's on the right track. Uh, but I think there's a lot of refining um, that needs to be done in terms of just where the product is situated. Is it a superbalist? Is it spree? Is it Zando? Like, which end of the market is he ultimately going to settle on? When I read his profile, I um, mean, his company was registered in 2012. Mm. It's a good five, five odd years ago. Mm. He's done like three things, and it seems like when he's finished this, he starts this. When he's finished this, he starts this. So I don't know if the jockey has found what they really want to do. Yeah, because I think he's passionate into yeah. into into the manufacturing and the production side. It shouldn't side. take too long to explore. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I agree. Speed. Yeah. Speed. yeah. Speed's key. Huh? Okay, guys, let's move along. We'll move on to our next entrepreneur. And it is Little Harvard Kids Academy. Wow. I'm Lucia Mansadam, the founder and the current CEO of Little Harvard Kids Academy. What makes us unique is that we are 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year operational Kids Academy. We offer services like aftercare, daycare, uh, weekend care and night care. Okay, Little Harvard Kids Academy in Secunda. Do these 24-7, 365 kids places exist? Yep. I do. I do know of a few in Cape Town. I know yes. very few. I know very few in Joburg. They're just not enough. Not enough. Yeah. yeah. And it makes sense, right? And very ideal in the area because exactly they work shifts. So she's very good solid. value proposition. What we're pitching for now is for the fifty thousand. It's for transportations. We've done a research and basically we found that we can actually get a taxi for that amount of money, fifty thousand. Now. Um, what, uh, what, what will happen is we've got 33 kids currently that are using scholar transport, of which we've got 21 kids for aftercare that uses transport as well. Now, each child for daycare, they pay 650 for transport, and because from the school to the aftercare is not that much of a distance, they pay 300 rands. What will happen is we're going to attract more clients, and uh, we can also pick up our kids that are going to slip over. And we can also be on call on weekends for the drop of kids. I like the way that she's put out her numbers. Yeah, she's mm. you know, yeah. solid. She gets her she, business. Yeah. Yeah. So if I was to stick to the foundation of what this thing is about and also what's on paper, I think that she is an excellent example of what it takes to build your dream. In terms, of, in terms of being a leader. I think that her business is unique and she can sell that business all day long and people will give her an audience because it's solutions based. And one of the unique things about being successful in providing services is how am I helping you and you and you? So she's got a solution for all three of you yes. at the table at one go. Please go and approach Sasol Enterprise Development with a proposal as to how they can support your business. And I'm at Sasso, as you guys requested me to do, I managed to actually set up a meeting, and today I'm doing my pitch with Sasso. We're hoping that you will tell us what we want to hear. Our academy incorporates talents, gifts, and academics of kids, and it is in Sekunda. And um, we offer services like day care, night care, holiday care, School care, um, after school care, Saturday classes, reading classes, drop offs for kids from three months up until six years, and we've got grade ones to grade sevens. 
you understand that it's a 24 hours environment. Mm. So I think this then addressed the issue of our employees who single parents. I mean, when Secunda, we don't have the full supporting, uh, family supporting structure. Mm. So if I've got a child and I need to go for the breakdown or I need to go for the emergency, then I know that my child is going to sleep somewhere. So mm. I, 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 am I right? What is your request? What do you want Sasom to do? Maybe <laughs> that's bluntly. Container. To help me with, with a, Container. a new building because that one is, is torture. You need the new building. I need a new building. Your study material, everything study you material. have. Not everything. New building with the content. <laughs> oh, yes. okay. okay. New building with the content. I feel like we lost the process somewhere down the line from I need transport yeah. in my business. Then building. I need a building and all the contents. <laughs> and then I'm hustling to put together an event. Yeah. Go and spend some time in some structured and very successful creches and preschools and whatnot. Try and spend a few days, watch, learn. Mm. Sure. That's the second task, right? I'm at his way Christian Academy to speak with the principal in terms of mentoring me as uh, one of my um, task that I need to do. Welcome here, thank you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Now it will be a pleasure to help you <laughs> and then we so both together. And we build together oh, on these cool. little ones. Yes. Okay. Thank you very Good much. I'm in Joburg today. Today I'm with this lovely lady. <laughs> She's the owner of Cotton Tails Nursery School and Yes, they've allowed me to come to their school and learn more about them, um, and they will learn more about me as well. So you'll continue with us, but I want to see how much cash you bring to the table. Yeah. And then we can have a conversation. Okay. Um, at this Tender's office um, to discuss uh, an event. She's going to be helping me with it. Hi, I'm at Graceland now. Give me a list of all your companies that you've got. Um, sponsors. Um, um, actually, outside the local newspaper's offices. I'm organizing a golf, a golf day for different companies, so I want to put it on the newspaper so that we can get sponsorship for the day to be possible. I went through quite a number of companies, I think around 10 today, and yeah, some they give me some very harsh answers, but yeah, um, I'm still continuing. I just spoke to the principal of the dealership, and he promised that he's gonna pour us fuel for the vehicle that we're gonna get, should we get the vehicle, um, from next month up until December. Although she was getting rejected, she did not say, I'm tired, I'm done. She said, like, this is tough, yeah. but I'm still here. Yeah. And that's unique. So I like her a lot. Yeah. And uh, we with, can your see money, that. <laughs> with your money, we can see that. we'll yeah. invest in her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also when one of the tasks was, we'd like to help you, but uh, you need to come up with some yes. of the money. She could have said, oh, gosh, where am I going to get the money yes. from? And then she went and started doing fundraising. And what Absolutely. I liked about her fundraising initiatives, the Golf Day is targeting companies. Yes. And then she still said 100 community. million from the communities. Yes. And I thought, wow, she's, she's literally yeah. done it. You yeah. know? Our next entrepreneur is Cabela Real Estate. Uh, let's see what they have to offer. All right. Hi, this is Fiso Mkabela and Sabelo Mkabela. Uh, we are the co-founders of Mkabela Real Estate. We specialize in property development, renovations and carpentry together with renting out of property. Our dream is to rebuild Soweto. We want, we want to make beautiful houses uh, with beautiful interiors um, and want to maintain the highest standard of living at a very affordable price. So why do we deserve to win 50,000 Rand? Well, we deserve to win 50,000 Rand because we understand what it means for our business. We are spending 5,000 Rand a month on petrol. We are spending uh, 20,000 Rand on cutting the material. Also, 
we are using suppliers that use another supplier. So if we had our own machinery, we would cut out the middleman and save us 13,000 Rand. I think I'd like to see the following from you guys. I'd like to see a presentation with a proper growth strategy. Um, secondly, we've spoken about mentorship. I'd like you guys to go and engage one or two people who are, have made you know, inroads and, and have gotten quite far in this space. And then the last thing is that you've got to come back with financials that speak to your historics because we've seen bank statements we haven't actually seen financials mm -hmm. sure. uh, I would like to see those that you know whether it man management accounts mm -hmm. just to take us and you know Manager. show us the last few months or years um, and give us a sense of the story of the business and then proper projections that take into account all the different divisions revenue cost etc etc proper financial Yeah, it's quite disappointing. Um, unfortunately, the entrepreneur has been disqualified um, for not completing their task timeously within the time period set and also not videoing because um, that's one of the criteria that they, you know, they videotape. And I don't think it was too hard, guys. Um, yes, Nicholas. <laughs> they lost. <laughs> they lost, they absolutely. Lost. Okay, so... It's the time for us to decide who's made the move to the next round and who hasn't. So we have to choose our top four. Ladies and gent. So we've come to the part where we need to make decisions on other people's fate, on whether they move to the next round or whether their move ends here. Uh, how do Is it do a that? difficult task? Uh, it's a very wonderful task. <laughs> um, I think so too. Quite some easy. Some of them made it very I don't easy think for it's us. Difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, Mkavela is disqualified. Can um, I just say my top three? I've got my top four. Okay. Great. Ladies, can I please ask you to pass me the envelopes? And that's it. Now that our judges have deliberated, we are going to deliver our envelopes to our entrepreneurs. Our first stop is in Gauteng, Pretoria, with Rev Productions. Hi, Making Moves. I've just received my envelope from the show. I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm anxious to find out what's inside. Now the road leads to Johannesburg CBD to see Mkabela Real Estate. I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited that I was in the top seven. Um, I'm obviously anticipating or hoping that I make it into the top four. Then we took a short detour to Omonde to see Ambesha Africa. I feel very nervous. I believe everyone Laba uh, Abarega this competition, we did very well. Sisa kona ekoli, saka sati shelele, saya emalve, ukambisa envelope, kubundu heights. Hey, how's it making moves? Ah, oh, thanks. Umasuga ekoli. Every state, wellness and fitness club. I have mixed emotions. I don't know. Kiki handle fair. I'm just me. 
province ya Chokrin, impumala. Lapo kona sambile siyobona ubinda two tissue or separate plus. From the first show, I learned so much. And um, I'm grateful because all of that I've learned and the task that I was given, I really tried my utmost best to actually implement it. I've seen so much changes and that for me was just life-changing. Game for Walapo, who humbled Louis to look in a second, a little Harvard Kids Academy. Can someone come and take a picture of me? I'm a bit nervous, but excited at the same time because it doesn't matter what the results are. I think I've been exposed to quite a number of platforms and I've learned a lot through the competition already. Yeah, I think I've done enough uh, to make it to the next round. And that's the result, South Africa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So I'll be seeing you guys again. <laughs> that's really awesome. <laughs> I don't want to cry. I, I, I genuinely don't want to cry. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Pepsi. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's more work to be done again. But uh, I'm very happy because I've done something right to be on top four. Night of for you. Little Harvard Kids Academy. Then there are two tissues. Ambassador Africa. Hotel Wellness and Fitness Club. It is going to be an all woman affair in next week's grand finale as they battle it out for the 50,000 grand investment. The stage is all set. Her business, it's my favorite. If I need to think where it's going to make the biggest difference, yes. it wouldn't be with her right now. It wouldn't. They seem to understand what I was talking about. I didn't finish. I don't want to say anything about the pitch. I was clear enough about what I was pitching. Catch Making Moves Grand Finale, Monday, 2 p.m. on SABC One, Zansi for sure.